Welcome to WO50, Women Over 50 in Body Wisdom and Wellness. Yep, that's us. We're women over 50. I'm Corinne and I'm with my BFF, Eddie. And today our topic was the quest for happiness. And then the byline that you came up with was the research or the me search. Me search. Yep. And then it was the B search. <laughs> <laughs> Just B. Just be. Yeah. Yeah. We had a good, good conversation about what happiness is, um, where it comes from, how to find it. Um, do you find it or is it already innately within you? You have to listen to find out. We have lots of little tidbits. Mm -hmm. Come listen in. Mm -hmm. Hope you enjoy it. Hello, my BFF. Hello, my BFF. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. It's starting to have cooler nights here in Nashville. And so I've got the window open the last few nights. It's been amazing. Great. All the things that make us happy. Which is our topic today, <laughs> you sly dog, you. Yeah. <laughs> the quest for happiness. And research. I, what, remember, it's yep. research or me search. Yeah, I love that. You texted me that today and I was like, you're, you're so good at titles. I You're love, I love little quirky things, you know, words, playing isms. with words. Yeah. <laughs> Your eddy -isms. So is it, re yeah, we're researching on happiness. It's really the me search on happiness, which leads into what we're going to talk about really about happiness. Cause some people, I know it, it's so funny because we, words have different meanings for different people. I have this conversation with my roommate all the time. Cause she's very smart. She's a word girl. She doesn't like the word happiness at all because in her, in her mind, happiness just means something on the outside that, that, you know, a new car makes you happy or a person makes you happy. She doesn't consider that happiness comes from within and, yeah, and, but it's, and go oh, ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. No. Well, it's happiness is, is the sense though. It's that sense of contentment or joy. Well, that's well your definition. Right? That's why I wanted to define it first. Yeah. Okay. So okay. her definition, which I respect okay. is not, is something on the outside, which is many people's definition. What we're talking about today, why we love the word research and me search is, is the, the joy you feel that is, is that I would say is your in, inherent nature, mm -hmm. but it gets covered up by yearning, judgments, thoughts, feelings, expectations, longing, envy, um, envy. envy all, yeah, all of it. The happiness right? killer, right? Envy. <laughs> What's that? What's that sound again? Uh, that's that's <laughs> my yeah. That's the little sound, you know. If we would do cartoons or Disney or something, that was that's envy sound. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's I great! I love it. I love it. Yeah. So, what um, what's been your? Can you want to want to share maybe a little bit about your journey on happiness? What your journey for happiness has been? it wasn't what was make me happy. Like I wasn't a happiness seeker. I was, I actually every day tried to find, I really did try to find something that gave me joy, you know, to, 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 to I just felt like my days were pretty happy, <laughs> you know, I think. And also, um, I remember saying to you, I had this um, gut check done. Remember, I think one of our podcasts, we talked about it. And I had the serotonin, a lot of serotonin being released in my gut, which was a hormone that kind of gives you the happiness feeling. Mm -hmm. So it helps with oxytocin and dopamine and all that. Mm. So, yeah, you know, that's. So you've never struggled with depression? No, not really. I haven't. I mean, I've had some sad moments. I've. But it didn't last very long. It moved in, it moved out. So I, my, my constant state of well-being has been pretty joyful. You know, now I've had my struggles in childhood or teenage years or as an adult. and But it never, if I was to reflect on my life, I wouldn't say it had a lot of unhappy times. It yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, okay. Good. Looking from the outside, looking in, I would agree. You've, you've, you, because I think it's natural for us all to have challenges and 
that's why I don't love the word depression, but to have melancholy moments, to have very challenging moments. You, you and I both been divorced and that that's very sad and, and, and challenging. Um, but you've never spiraled into depression as many people um, have in the world. And he, he seems to be a huge problem now. Well, um, yes, because I, yeah. I've always felt like struggles were just part of it. It's just, you know, from a very young age, I, I just felt, you know, if you're struggling, then wow, when you're not struggling anymore, there's happiness. Yeah. <laughs> there's that beautiful feeling that whatever that is, because it's different for everybody. Don't you think that yeah. the feeling of joy, contentment, or the situations, right? The variables that you know, allow happiness to, to seep in. Right. So that's the thing that I see. I see, and I, and I, and I th think it's definitely is connected to the brain. I think there are some of us that are very blessed and wired to be naturally happy. Like I know, I don't know how much serotonin I have, but cause I haven't done the test yet, but I know that I am blessed with a very positive mind. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, cause I, I work with many people that aren't blessed with a positive mind or that tend towards depression or tend towards, uh, you know, being stuck or whatever it is. And so what I it found in my seeking, so, so I never struggled with depression, but I did struggle, struggle with a deep sense of loneliness, deep sense of loneliness my whole life. At uh, my whole life until I, you know, found meditation and stuff. So, in, you know, 20s, 30s. Um, and I also struggled with a deep sense of yearning for something bigger and something more. And that kind of leads us into that book we were talking about before we got on the podcast today. Eddie had yeah. texted me this morning. Um, <laughs> let's do, I said, can you come up with a title? She texted me all these titles. I'm like, well, which one do you want? So we settled on the quest for happiness. And so then I was, uh, you know, listening to Tim Ferriss today, who I love. And there was this author talking about happiness. And I was like, oh, this will be a good one for today. Research for our podcast. And, and so there's this professor from Harvard talking about, he wrote a book with, with, on happiness with uh, Oprah. And he, and he's a, he's, he does a, he does a course uh, at Harvard on happiness. And so mm -hmm. I'm telling this to Eddie and she goes, yeah, I wrote down his name, Arthur. What is it? Brooks. Arthur, Arthur Brooks. Brooks. I'm like, yeah, Him that's what I listened to. Yeah. yeah and we himself. both came up. Go ahead. Yeah. Him and Oprah just wrote that book. Um, build, build the life you want. I think is it's called just this year is 2023. Um, yeah. So it's interesting because there's so many, there's so many articles on happiness and books and every corner you turn and every bookshelf and magazine and everyone's talking about happiness, you know, how yeah. to find it. How do you, how do you be happy? How, what makes you happy? Because I think that I, what I'm loving is that the culture, the world culture and the conversation and podcasts and books is changing. So people are, I've said this before on the podcast that people are starting, it's starting to be part of the conversation that you're not your thoughts. You know, I don't think people really fully understand that yet, but at least it's starting to be part of the conversation, which it never was before. And then this happiness thing too, because we're basically been hijacked by our egos. So we've been hijacked by, and of course, social media marketing, not just social media, because it was here way before any commercial that you've ever watched on television, like there are these experts that are trying to get your dope, like push your dopamine uh, receptors. Like you'll, you'll be better if you buy, you'll look better and people will like you if you have these sunglasses and no matter how aware you are, there's still a conditioning, like your brain is wired to like familiarity. So if you see a body that's this weight and this shape enough, you're, that's what your brain will like because it likes familiarity. I saw this show years ago where they were showing the problem with um, uh, criminal lineups is because white people can recognize white faces much better. But if you throw Asian or black person or something like a different uh, uh, um nationality in there we don't recognize their distinction in their in their in their faces as much and they're the same thing an asian person can't mm -hmm. see the distinctive features cuz it's not as familiar mm -hmm. so so our brain is very interesting and in, and in how we're how we're wired and of course one of my favorite books that I'll put a link in is the 
the dopamine nation that's really great on how how we we do we are high, hardwired for satisfaction not satisfaction for pleasure pleasure mm -hmm. and we're seeking satisfaction because we're biological beings but we're much more than biological beings so I think people are, it's starting to be part of the conversation now that things on the outside aren't going to bring us happiness. Yeah, I, I agree. And I did love that book, the dopamine nation and yeah. everything, it, it, everything is a hit, you know, even the sugar or whatever, even turning on your media. phone, yeah. turning, even getting a text. Media. Mm -hmm. That's why we check our phones so often because it's yeah. a dopamine hit. It's a chemical release in your brain. Seeing the red dot, somebody's got a message for me. Yes. And then it creates a joy. And then when you read it and it's not so joyful, it ruins your day. Yeah. And you know, or ruins Arthur the Brooks moment, hopefully doesn't ruins ruin the your moment. Day. Well, it can ruin the day too. If they stay for some on people. Yeah. For some people, they just stay on just reading this information. And, you know, Arthur Brooks, I loved it when he was speaking to Oprah, he said, um, a social media, when someone gets on there is just a snapshot of somebody's life. Mm -hmm. And that's going to affect you, you immediately. You know, it's just, it's just a snapshot, but we get kind of hooked into that and wanting more of it, but that's not what. Oh, I can't happy fame, yeah. you know, doesn't make you happy. It can, it's the seeking, you know, it's the temporary. Okay. So what we're looking for, the distinction is lasting happiness, that's right? So fame might give somebody temporary pleasure. Mm -hmm. And even temporary happiness, but that yeah, that's very temporary. What we're looking for and what we're distinguishing is lasting happiness. What will give us lasting happiness? And, um, you know, so, so really, and, and really our nature is that. Mm -hmm. you, all you have to do is look at a baby to realize that. The, a baby, when we look at a baby, we giggle and we feel joy and Mm -hmm. why do we do that? Why do we, everybody loves a baby or a puppy or a baby animal or something. It's like, yeah. there's, in, there's really nothing there other than innocence and yeah. newness. Yeah. Like they're not so, corrupted oh, yet so, or have the program yet. Oh, it's so beautiful. You know, it's funny you said that. Cause I saw one of my patients yesterday and she just had twins and she said, can you tell them apart? And I'm like, well, the one little one looking straight at me, I was like, that has to be Anna because her eyes were, and I'll never forget. I'll always be able to dis distinguish between the two of them. But all I did, I was like gooing and gone. And I was like, oh, yeah. you know, your voice changes with little babies and they're smiling. You'll do anything. You're totally unaware of everyone around you. And you're just making a, a scene of yourself, but you're just captivated with this baby these both these babies yeah and it's so beautiful and I, I mean just thinking back to it yesterday warms my heart you know like they're so sweet so that was joy joy contentment seeing friends you know that creates happiness having meaning in your life with your friends and family and those those are lasting happiness you know that's well it, it, the, the thing is what I want to distinguish because friends and family aren't lasting happiness because they can have moods and they come and go. Well, it's the true. feeling that you get. It's okay. This is a good conversation. Yeah. This is, yeah. this is my, I love this conversation. Yeah. So it's the feeling that you get when you have the connection, but what you have to realize is it's not them. It's a feeling that it invokes that is already within you. So yeah. it's not the extreme, a better example might be like an extreme sport or traveling, or, you know, something that people obviously think is something outside of themselves, you know, mm -hmm. and it's not the extreme sport that what that they get addicted to and why they love it so much. It's the feeling they're present in the moment. When mm -hmm. you're jumping off a cliff and you and you've got to pull a parachute or a kite behind you, you're not thinking about how much it costs you. You're you're just you're thinking about the being present in the moment. Because And that's what the joy is, is being present. And that's what happens when we're with people we love. We're not thinking about our bills or our, our bad conversations we've had. We're just fully present in joy. And that's what you were with the, what you described beautifully with the babies. You were oblivious to everything else. You were just yeah. fully present. So yeah. that's the big, you know, 
and and I'm not saying that we don't go do do all that. It's just that it's already within us. And once you understand that, because people don't believe it when I first tell them that, but mm -hmm. then when I give them more examples and they still don't believe it. And then once they start down this journey, you know, to the self-awareness and meditation, maybe if that works for me and mindfulness, mm -hmm. and then, then they can get that feeling just by being in the garden or in nature or walking by themselves or doing a random act of kindness right? It just creates that sense of well-being that in the moment, that in that moment, the living in the moment, which we always kind talk of go about. back to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there is, you know, in the, this guy did, you know, he's done all this research and stuff. And he did say the recipe for happiness is enjoyment, satisfaction, and meaning. Mm -hmm. So we've kind of talked about those three and, and, we do the meaning part is big because we have to have something that's and and this works for atheists too we have to have something that is bigger than ourselves hmm. to have meaning and that's why people find meaning in you know spirituality there's many people that don't like to call it that and they get just as much meaning in nature they get i guess maybe awe is a better word when you feel full of awe and you have mm -hmm. no words for something and your heart is full, watching a sunset, watching a sunrise, seeing a baby, that that's, you know, what some people get from going to church or uh, meditating or all these different things, but meaning, finding meaning and our, it's kind of our minds that do create the meaning, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's people that are depressed. Usually they've lost their hope and their meaning in life. Mm hmm you know, yeah, sometimes the, with church or prayer, or it, it's often fellowship and community and connection. And sometimes it's music. Sometimes it's, you know, they're feeling the music or feeling um, the words of something they're singing, because everybody has a different meaning sometimes towards those words, you know? Yeah. 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 Music is a good one too. It's mm -hmm. interesting because as you know, since this is W O five O. It's a, the topic that I, you know, cause I work with young people too, but I also work with plenty of people that are, you know, our age and, and, and older. And, and there is this theme of finding meaning and purpose um, when we're not, when we're retired, when we're not sort of in the workforce anymore. And that's kind of a big, I've helped many people over the years with that. Um, and you, I know you have as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, well, it, it's like the title of that book, Build the Life You Want. This is what, it, what first of all, you got to figure out what do you want? So now that you're retired, some people go, I don't know who I am anymore without that label. So, okay. So lay that label down because there's, there's always a little story around things or there's information that we have. And well, instead of waiting for something to change, you know, we can change it. We can, you know, some people want to paint or they want to just sit within and hear the answer in the silence, just sit within themselves and go, hmm, when do I feel that feeling? What does happiness feel like? I feel the contentment with, you know, because a lot of times when I make suggestions to people, and they go, I need to, to find some purpose. I need, you know, or they will talk about being depressed or lonely or sad. And, um, you know, we, we, then we start filling up the toolbox with different things, but you know, our topic is, is the happiness, right? Or as your t-shirts say, you are the happiness you seek. Actually the t-shirts say happiness is an inside job. Well, but I love that you are the happy, you are, <laughs> you well, are I just made up a new t-shirt for you, but. <laughs> I, did, I, did, I love it. Just let me finish. Then she has another T-shirt that says <laughs> happiness is an inside <laughs> job. <laughs> yeah. Or we could do even further and be the change you want to see in the world. Oh, yeah, that's Gandhi. That's gone already. That's mm. yeah. okay. It's all yeah. good. It's all there's nothing new under all the good. sun. There's not. There's nothing yeah. new. No, no. You're the, so I think go. where we're headed to is just inquiring. I, I don't love the question, what is it that you want? But I'm not well, saying it's wrong. Well, maybe it's emotional self-management. <laughs> oh, 
that's a new one, isn't it? Yeah. Let's unpack that. What does that yeah. mean? Well, how you would manage. So they just take, let's break down every word, emotional self-management. So only you know your emotions. How are you going to manage them? How, you know, when happiness does come in, oh, how do you recognize that? So even if it's painting, and because I love to paint, and I don't paint every single day, you know, but I, you know, go down and I explore and I try something different. And sometimes I just get this overwhelming feeling of joy. And I'm just like, wow, I love that. That's really nice. And then I start adding more and more to it. And then I ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> I should have stopped while I had that feeling. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's that inquiry process of, you know, what, and by inquiry, I just mean just asking yourself, because we come to conclusions with things like we come to conclusions when we have conversations with people, we came to conclusions in our past with our childhood, with our with our siblings, we have conclusions about how they feel about us and how that, how we are. We have a lot of uh, assumptions and, and stuff, but we created in our mind. And so breaking those down um, and figuring out what's real, because ultimately the happiness that you seek is here already. And then the painting is an expression of that giggling like a child when you see a child is an expression of that laughing with your best friend or your sister your brother is an expression of that it's not the those connections even those connections are natural and they're awesome but to know that you have that even if you're not connecting with someone mm -hmm. you have that inside you already because what happens is people get in their head oh I'm, I'm lonely. I mean, that was my thing, right? I was so lonely and I would read all these books. And, and I remember I had this big aha when, when I, when I, this is years ago when it said alone, if you just add one, another L it's all one, hmm. you know? And I remember it was like, I, I know we're all one, but I don't feel that I'm lonely, you know? And it yeah. was, but I kept inquiring and meditating and failed relationship after failed relationship in my twenties realizing that it wasn't a relationship that was going to make me happy because I wasn't even happy in relationship, definitely not happy after. And, and that's what it helped me. I inquired like, what is it? And then I finally, when I started meditating, found it in myself. And then, you know, with music and all that was just an expression, a natural expression, teaching yoga, whatever it is and a natural expression of what's already there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. It it takes a lifetime, doesn't it? That's why over 50 now and we, you know, hitting 60 and we go, wow, when we look back at the experiences and even the struggles, if you didn't have any struggles, you wouldn't feel the joy. Like that's the thing. You 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 know, there's happy, unhappy. There's this bucket load of emotions, you know, they're like house guests coming in. You know, and we want we want the feel good ones to stay and hang out longer, but often they don't. Well, that's you know? actually what can cause unhappiness is that expectation that life is supposed to be fun all the time yeah. and happy all the time. And the thing is, is there there is an innate happiness that's even there in sadness. Now, that takes some coaching to try to find that. I have found that, but it has taken me. 40 years to be able to access that in the midst of tears and things like that. But, but life is, yes, it's a wonderful point. Life is all of it. And it, and the, the, the discomfort and pain comes from the resistance of the different things happening in our life. It's, that's one of the things I teach people every day. It's like, they want, you know, we want as human beings, I don't know why we want you know, we think that good things are going to make us happy all the time. My biggest example is we don't go to a movie that we've already seen, or we don't read the end of the book, or some people do, but then they don't enjoy the book as much. Yeah. You know, we don't really want to know. We don't really, and we won't read a book that is ha all happy with no protagonist and no nothing big plot that that has a the the negativity and stuff. We we don't we don't want a fairy tale without the monster. 
Yeah. We won't, we won't go see a movie if it's all happy. We, or watch a series on TV. So why do we think our life is going to be <laughs> like that, that we'd like it more? So it's really about, yeah, getting comfortable with the discomfort. And I think that's what death teaches us. It's like, it's such a natural part of life, whether mm -hmm. it's the death of a pet or as we get older, the death of our parents, mm -hmm. uh, you know, or the untimely death of a, of a friend or, or coworker. It's like, it's, it's a very natural part of life or, and we're not here for that long. Yeah. You know, it's such a it, it, gratitude is a big recipe for, for happiness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I always say happiness is like the secret sauce. <laughs> it's the secret sauce. Yeah. I remember at my dad's um, funeral, I have quite a funny family and you know, he was a very funny, funny man. And we had moments where we were laughing so hard at stories that people were telling, like, here's dad, you know, waking there, right? The Catholic funeral. And we're all laughing. And then the guilt of laughing, and then we're crying. And then, you know, you, you know, that, you know, that feeling. And it's just, a, a, it should just should be a celebration of life is what it is. You know, you're, you're enjoying the stories and the experiences and, and then you're in the emotional turmoil of it all. And you truly, there's moments where, you know, there's such peace and contentment and joy and happiness. And you're at a funeral. It's like, what, what, but allowing it is fine. People go, oh my God, we shouldn't be laughing. I was like, well, why not? Why not? It's all the feelings. Feel. Just, it's good to feel. We can cry then. Then we'll go over here and we'll cry all day long. And we'll, or for 15 minutes, however long you want to cry for. Yeah. Often it said laughter is the best medicine, remember? Years ago. Oh my gosh. I we have when... laughed so many times so hard. We would... Oh my goodness. It's terrible. People, when they see the two of us together and then we laugh and not terrible in a bad way, terrible in a great way. Cause we laugh so hard. We start coughing, you know, that, that your yeah. lungs are shook up and, and it's a major detox. It's great. It's like cleansing. And I don't know. It's awesome. Yeah. I, I remember I had some health challenges about six, seven years ago, and I knew that I had to get to see you in Newfoundland. And it was so healing because the, the laughter, I, it was just, you make me laugh so hard. It was just so amazing. Well, it's, it's a, that's what we relate happiness with to often is laughing, right? We go, oh, it's, but it, that's an expression, you know, when you're laughing, it's like, how are you feeling now inside? What is that feeling? What is that feeling? It's like, and then what is that walk in nature? What is that feeling? You know? call it whatever you want. Just even that feeling. It's, yeah. it's that's what we want to tap into. What are you feeling? Well, all those examples that you're giving, laughing, walking in nature, ooing and gooing at a baby, there's no Peace. thinking happening. No. There's no, just no being thinking. and there's just experiencing. There's just experiencing the moment. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Experiencing the moment, enjoying friendships. And then as we get ready to head on a trip somewhere, a friend says, oh, you can cross that off your bucket list. And I went, gee, I don't, I don't have a bucket list. I'm going to ask, ask Ken if she has a bucket list. <laughs> And you yeah. have a bucket list. No, neither one of us has a bucket list. In fact, this is one of the things that this author said in this talk with Tim Ferriss. He ha he calls it the reverse bucket list. And he said, because there's a lot of people that have goals and bucket lists, with which there's nothing wrong with that. But his concept of the reverse bucket list, he said, because you might have a goal that you're after your whole life and you might not ever get it. And so it's like this longing in the back of your brain. So he, he says, write down a goal. And, or a bucket, something on your bucket list, and then cross it out and forget about it. So he, that's the, w what he says will help with the attachment of it. Cause then if it happens, you're happy about it. It's not that you don't still go for it. It's you're not as attached to it. 
Yes. So you and I have done quite well with that because we don't have a bucket list at all. <laughs> no, but boy, if I started at one, I got a lot done. You know, when I think back, <laughs> what would I put in my bucket? List? Oh yeah, I've done that. I've done that. That's cool. That's cool. Hmm. Yeah. Oh yes. Not that we haven't done a lot in our lives because yes. we have. Yes. You know, when everybody we'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. We our big moments and life changing moments and yeah all those things. Yeah. yeah. So it's really about welcoming all of the experience of life, not staying out of your head with things because the head can get you in trouble, just feeling into the moment and um, allowing things to flow through you. And if you need help from a friend or a podcast or a life coach or a, a doctor or a therapist um, to help you with that, to kind of go with help you to be able to roll with life and roll with the things that happen and not get stuck because that's what I see mostly is people getting stuck with things and their opinions and their attitudes and their expectations. And, and it's really, you know, life is going to happen whether you plan it or not. Life is going to happen. It's kind of like, oh, I love this, this visual actually. It's like of someone, life is like jumping out of a plane and not you know, before you um, pull the parachute. So when you jump out of a plane and you're free falling, you can go like this and go, ah, and really enjoy it. Or you can go like this and grasp and at the air at, at nothing. And you know, some people that are grasping at the air and they're fighting everything and doing, or are you going to free fall through it? And then eventually, you know, you can pull your chute, but um, but yeah, that's, that's the visual that I love is just kind of, you know, rolling with life as it happens. And it doesn't mean you're looking for all pleasurable experiences. It doesn't mean that you're not looking for it. It's that you're, you're accepting life as it comes to you. Yeah. Well, look at what happened during COVID. A lot of things shifted and changed. And, you know, during that time for me, I decided to, enroll um, at Yale and study the psychology of well-being. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. And and there was a, a, a huge segment on happiness, like what to do day to day, just with happiness. And it was, you know, and now it's coming into my head. And it was, if you're not happy, okay, you got COVID or you're in the midst of it and you can't get out and you can't get, because we got cold and flu season coming up soon again. And we're going to go through some of the same type of things being isolated and, you know, hopefully not like the extreme it was during COVID. But what do you do when you're searching, you're, you are, you're on the quest for happiness, so if you're not having the best day, I, I one of these things that stuck really well with me was just go out and do a random act of kindness. Just 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 go do something random. Pay for the person's coffee in the line behind you or 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 go and get something you love. You love the flavor of and savor it. Savor it for as long as you can. Just in that moment, right? And and there was a bunch you know, of little things like that, you know, the, the gratitude or make a phone call or volunteer or yeah, go visit somebody who has baby or a puppy. Like there's a bunch of things, but we have to do them. We can't wait for someone else to come along to make us happy mm -hmm. and, or something to make us happy. I'll retire, then I'll be happy. Because a lot of times people find out they retire and then they got to take care of elderly parents or grandkids or their health or somebody else's health or their partners or, you know, the list goes on. So happiness is within. You find those moments, right? Do you know the mechanics of why all those things you listed work? Because it takes people out of themselves. Yes. People are sad when they're self-absorbed and thinking about all the things going wrong in their life. Mm -hmm. And so as soon as you help somebody else, you're seeing with gratitude how lucky you are and it makes you feel good to help somebody else. 
as soon as you savor something, you're getting out of your head, right? And all the ants, the antidote to all of those things is get out of your head, whatever, go jump out of a plane. That'll get you out of your head really quick. So we'll, yeah, really quick. It'll get you in the moment, but instead of like we said at the beginning, the me search will change it and we'll call it just be search. Yeah. 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 Learn to be. Learn to be mm-hmm. with nothing else. No, learn to nothing be else. happy. Learn to be grateful. Learn to just learn to be. Learn to be and accept it and on and feel into it, whatever that emotion is. And if there's the days going long, too long without happiness or the week's gone and nothing's been joyful or, you know, you haven't felt it, then we got to dig deep and go, okay, hang on, let me get to my tools. Let me just do something for somebody else. And let me just go back to that list again. And then get that feeling again, get that, yeah. that happiness the secret sauce. <laughs> it's just, it's not the thing. It's the, it's the, what it's accessing within you. I yes. tell people even to watch a funny movie and laugh a little bit. Yes. It's not the funny movie. It's the laughter and the fact that you're not thinking about all the crap that was in your head before when yes. you're laughing. Yes. Yes. It's not what's going to make you happy. It's As what will it's invoke like... the happiness that's already within you. Mm-hmm. It's a wellspring. Yeah beautiful Mm. we could have ended the podcast a couple minutes ago with the b part because we usually do end with the b part but that was that was a deep deep dive that i really enjoyed that that's you know it's my favorite conversation happiness and me too yeah i love that we're such good friends it makes me happy (laughs) <laughs> but I don't make you happy. No. It invokes the happiness that's already within you. <laughs> exactly. There it is. And it's when an we go inside. To, yeah, that's <laughs> right. And when we go to Sicily, it's not it's not the trip to Sicily that's making us happy, even though we're gonna enjoy the heck out of it. It's the food. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Thank you so much for coming up with the topic today and the title. It was really great. It was fun. Thanks. Thanks for being you. And thank you to everyone for listening. Yeah. Until we meet again. Be happy. Be kind.